welcome back. Our first task will be to find out about this concept of electricity that Ulmer has invented. So what I'm going to do is call up a slideshow and have that be what we view. So hold on one second. Hopefully this works okay. And I will uh, ask you to forgive the poor graphics, but as I said in the other video, I will post these to SlideShare or somewhere where you could follow along if necessary. So we will be talking about electricity and first question is what is this? It is a neologism that Greg Ulmer created that describes the skills necessary to exploit the full communicative potential of new media. One of his famous analogies says that elect electricity is to digital media what literacy is to print media. And the term itself draws attention to the need for an entirely new term that avoids etymological connection to literacy. So the need for a native concept comes because we have this proliferation of quote-unquote literacies that you've probably heard about. There's digital literacy, media literacy, information literacy, computer literacy, procedural literacy, and they're all based on this old paradigm of literacy, which comes from the Latin for litera, which means letter. And I love, love this quote from James Inman on the need for a native concept. Uh, he says, it's important to distinguish electricity from other terms, such as all these literacies. None of these other terms have the breadth electricity does as a concept, and none of them draw their ontology from electronic media exclusively. So that is the advantage of having a new word. Ulmer works in what he calls, he works with what he calls an apparatus theory, and he calls an apparatus a social machine that maps the intersection among communications and mnemonic technologies institutional practices employing these technologies and also subject formation that is con conceptions of selfhood that result from these intersections so if you ever read any of his work you'll encounter some of these terms so basically the apparatus breaks human history into three major epochs one is the major one of orality which starts about 40,000 BC when Homo sapiens came to be um, and actually still is happening. We still have oral culture, we have speeches, we have debate, we have presentations. So these are uh, the epochs that don't go away, they are added to uh, as other epochs emerge. So alphabetic literacy starts about 5000 BC also still with us print literacy comes about with the invention of the Gutenberg press and the printing of the Bible about 1447 and electricity Ulmer says starts about 1830 with the invention of the photo uh, photography and that is where we start to see the other senses begin to be represented uh, uh, visual we, uh, the, the invention of radio the invention of video in the 20th century film etc so here's a kind of whimsical little timeline that playfully chooses uh, a few of the items and when they were invented alphabetic literacy 750 BCE Greece uh, printing press Peter Ramus this refers to uh, a, a figure that Walter Ong wrote about. Walter Ong's famous for a book called Orality and Literacy. And he also wrote a book about Peter Ramus. And Peter Ramus invented the outline, or at least that's what he's known for. Uh, then there's a little typewriter here, uh, radio, television, and finally computer, 1984. This is, I guess, probably meant to represent a Macintosh. So Ulmer likes to call himself a grammatologist and the way he characterizes grammatology is that it is a study of the history and theory of writing. So basically a grammatologist uses the history of literacy as an analogy to our own moment. 
Um, also uses comparisons with the transition from orality to literacy in order to organize inquiry into the transition we're experiencing now from literacy to electricy. And one way he puts this is to say literacy shows us by analogy what we are looking for, but it does not give the answer. So Ulmer often employs analogy as a way of trying to invent or find the answers and so some of his analogies follow here. He says at one point what selfhood was to the Greeks branding is to us. Playing one's avatar is for electricity what writing an essay is to literacy. And electricity does for the affective feeling body what literacy did for the cogitative thinking mind. Now here's a few more of the many that you'll encounter in his writings. School is to literacy as the internet is to electricity. Performance may be to electricity what definition was to literacy. A literate person reasons on paper via text. An electorate person feels online via felt. And a felt is a kind of product that one it creates when composing electronic media according to Ulmer. It's a felt and he, he likes to pun often as he follows in the steps of Breda and Lacan and the felt kind of as the as a textile is uh, kind of a dense densely woven fabric. I don't know how it's made exactly but but it also alludes to feeling the past tense of feeling so uh, that fits into that constellation. So in a kind of obscure work that he published in a journal called Visible Language he talks about this process and, and I thought this is a good model for what I'm calling analogical eurotics. Eurotics is the title of one of his books on the logic of invention and uh, it's very similar to heuristics it's just a kind of a, a, an obsolete term he resurrected so at one point in this essay it's inviting us to imagine a new form of memory or thinking and he says uh, the tree is to dialectical logic as the rhizome is to what and we're supposed to solve for the variable in this case X uh, uh, the blank and uh, anybody familiar with the philosophy of Deleuze and Guattari a thousand plateaus will recognize where this analogy is coming from uh, the tree and the rhizome so he writes in the essay that a variation on this exercise is to select a different natural form as the vehicle of the metaphor and this is where I think there's room for application uh, beyond uh, this particular example. So in this case, a tree is to dialectical logic as a natural form, the general category, is to a classification system. Again, another general category. And he suggests that this, this, this could be substituted uh, however you imagine. So, And one way that I have used these, or a couple ways I'll talk about here, so the first example of my use of analogical eurotics is to think about a new word for concept because uh, to me if the concept is a direct result of literacy if it emerges with literate thinking or as literate thinking then we need a different word for thinking in electricity and, and this is exactly the argument for the word electricity. We need a new word. So if I set up the equation here, I would say concepts are to literacy as what is to electricity. And uh, one example I came up with, playing with the root of the word, is to think, uh, let's substitute x as deceps as an example. So following through this, if literacy makes conceptual thinking possible, electricity makes deceptual thinking possible and that's a question mark we're investigating this so 
uh, a few examples of how this might look, uh, deceptual thinking. Here's that famous cartoon, I think it's a New Yorker cartoon, where the dog's talking to another dog, and he says, on the Internet, nobody knows you're a dog. So that, that goes way back. Another example of this, uh, deceptual thinking, comes from uh, Sherry Turkle's work called Life on the Screen, in which he's talking about MUDs as multi-user dungeons, kind of online, text-based, virtual games, spaces. She says, in sum, MUDs blur the boundaries between self and game, self and role, self and simulation. One player says, you are what you pretend to be. You are what you play. And finally, Ulmer himself, working in Internet Invention, says that the changing nature of identity in digital civilization is manifested here in the theme of impersonation. So three examples of how deceptual thinking might be a possible form of electric thinking. And it's something that we might explore a little bit in, during our first week or two in class. Another example of applying analogical heuretics, in this case uh, thinking of definition as a particularly literate form of thinking. So if we say definition is to literacy as infinition is to electricity. Uh, so if then if definition is the act of making clear, then infinition is the act of making unclear. And the question is, is this something that we do in electricity? And uh, here's a slide where I suggest that one possible paradigm for this, or thinking about this, is uh, fractal geometry. So that if definition is the creation of clear boundaries, then infinition is the creation of unclear or fuzzy boundaries. And here you see, hopefully you can see how the Coke snowflake, which is a kind of um, example par excellence of fractal geometry, and what they do is they take a triangle and assert, insert another triangle halfway around each of the sides of the triangle, and you could follow how that process goes, and it continues to do that, and if you continue to do that, ad infinitum and you know according to math you can then what happens to that boundary which is finite to begin with it becomes an infinite boundary so that is a possible emblem we might say of of uh, infinition or electric thinking and you know we have the this idea of fuzzy logic or fuzzy math as a kind of more advanced uh, form of mathematics that is not as oversimplified as some of the 17th, 18th century mathematics that we've seen. So then the goal is to invent new thinking and here's a quote from Jeff Rice, one of Ulmer's students, and he writes that electricity is not against literacy but is the means to assist our society in adding a new dimension to our language capabilities. This project proposes that our discipline also has primary responsibility for inventing the practices of reasoning and communicating in ways native to new media. And I think Jeff Rice was a student of English also, but you know, all of those boundaries are breaking down with the new, um, with the new media. So the next few slides are examples of transitional moments to where fear was expressed that we are losing some major kind of thinking uh, that that civilization will collapse it's it's especially alarmist I'm not gonna read all these slides but uh, you've probably seen some of these before especially this one from Plato the Phaedrus and this is one Ulmer often cites and the point is that you know here is Socrates saying oh look nobody's gonna be able to memorize anything they're gonna because people will write stuff down and, and you just can read the writing and, and the, the person won't have to be present in order to be able to explain what he means and all this. And as we know, uh, literacy didn't 
cause the world to end, but kind of made a lot of good things happen. So the premise is that electricity will also. Uh, the This other quote is from Marianne Wolf, a cognitive neuroscientist, and uh, she's got a great book called Pru Proust and the Squid, I believe it is. Uh, but what she says at the latter half of this is that the reading brain is slowly becoming endangered. The unforeseen consequences of the transition to a digital epoch that is affecting every aspect of our lives. So her book's pretty convincing, but again, I'm, I tend to be on in Ulmer's camp and say, okay, things are changing. You know, we're not going to necessarily know what they're going to look like. Uh, we, we can be part of the invention process, and yeah, it's it's not necessarily going to be all bad as long as we kind of are a part of the process. I think so. Uh, finally, uh, Sven Burkert's kind of famous, I won't call him a Luddite, but I might not be wrong in saying so, but uh, he, he has a book called The Gutenberg Elegies, and that's probably all I need to say about that. So finally, to end the slideshow here, I would say that electricity is, is an invitation to invention. And that's the nice thing about working with Ulmer is that He's always inviting us in to think through how the how we can invent new practices. And the challenge is, as he says here, the difficulty is uh, that we are immersed in it and everything is in flux. So right, then the slideshow ends with a couple of references, and, and that's all we have there. So I will try to end this. And uh, let's see. Okay, the slideshow has ended. So that's meant to serve as kind of an orientation to the first week to, to the concept of electricity. And my hope is to have you think deceptually and maybe write an infinition as part of our first exercise. So, you know, one thing Ulmer talks a lot about is that it's the avant-garde arts that have really set the stage and have started doing the work of electric thinking before even the those particular tools were invented. I mean, we have the Internet, but you know, they were doing this work in the early 20th century when film uh, and, and photography you know, all was kind of emerging and becoming mature. So... Hopefully there are a few artists among the class who can share with us possibly some of those processes that may come in handy. So, all right, until next time, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing what we can do with analogical uretics and thinking through how to think in an electric way. Until next time, see you soon.